All right, we're here for another episode of It's Not What You Think podcast. I'm here with, am I right when I say fellow Florida Keys man, Brett Evans, right? In- oh. Lost him. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> Lost him, and then he's back. All right. There we go. All right, so Brett, am I right when I, if I remember correctly, you're from the Florida Keys too, right? I am. That's awesome. Marathon. Marathon. So we're both from the same key. Uh, where were you born down there? No, I was not. I was actually born in Eustis, but we uh we moved down there, and I spent most of my childhood down there. Did you go to Stanley Switlick Elementary? No. No, I did not. No, I ended up going to uh, Oak Hill Elementary. Okay. And um, were you down there for high school in Marathon? No. No, I actually moved back up to uh, Orlando for Mar- uh, for high school and then uh, up to Michigan from there. Gotcha. So, uh, so it was more of my, my younger childhood years. Yeah, me too. Me too. It was pretty much from, you know, from birth to second grade and then I... You know, I grew up on a sailboat. I was a spoiled, pretty much rich kid on Key Colony Beach. And then I went to downtown Dallas. I was the only white kid at my school, and I literally got my ass beat uh, pretty much 500 days in a row for about two years, and I moved up to Michigan. So I had a really, I had a really big culture shock uh, when it came from going from Key Colony Beach on a sailboat to downtown dallas texas and getting my ass beat every day yeah but very similar for me as well because uh when i moved up from there to orlando i was uh pretty much the only caucasian so you know it was latino you know haitians and so yeah i I definitely experienced a lot of that myself and then moving to michigan back to the now now i'm here in traverse city so i'm in the northern sector so it's uh a whole nother culture shock from there. You know, um, you know, Carlos is uh thinking about throwing a fight up here in Muskegon up here in June, um, kinda by your way. And uh they're you know, I'm waiting for the confirmation date any day now, just so you know. So if you know anybody or or if you guys want to get back into it, you know, uh maybe in June there'll be a fight up there in Muskegon. So um so what do you do for work in this rat race? Right now, I... In? What's that? So what do you do for work in this rat race that we're, that the elite have us stuck in? <laughs> well, right now, uh, I'm uh, setting up tents and doing stuff for, like, weddings and uh, graduations and parties and stuff. It's uh, actually a pretty cool gig. I get to travel around northern Michigan and uh, see a lot of cool areas that uh, most people won't get to see. And uh, it's a pretty laxed atmosphere, and I pretty much get to choose my own destiny, which is a lot of why I've been there for as long as I have, because, you know, being able to control your own fate and do as you please is this work, hard to come by in the work industry. Yeah, that's worth more than money, man, is uh, it, how you spend yeah. it. Yeah, and the peace of mind being able to, you know, do the photography thing that I like to do on the side and, you know, the landscape that we get up here to do that, you know, I'm very fortunate to have uh, – the experience to be able to do that for the last 20 years so how many kids you have i have two two kids two daughters two daughters okay. and how old are they 13 and 14 well 12 and 14 12 and 14 all right so you're getting up into the formidable years where your mma training is really going to come into play with these uh the suitors, correct? <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's it's time for uh, for Pop to get back into shape because uh, I'm a little out of shape. But uh, yeah, these girls are gonna force Dad to get back into good shape. That's what they do, man. That's what they do. Uh, I'll say one thing, you know. People say, you know, when are you gonna fight again? And uh, I just keep thinking about um, just being in shape to make sure that I can protect my daughters in every way possible and. Uh, has nothing to do with a prize fight, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. It has everything to do with the lifestyle. 
you know, it's 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 beautiful to have those tools that we've gained from that lifestyle because, you know, moving forward, you want to be able to use those for, like you said, you know, in case your daughter has a situation, in case you need to, you know, it's a beautiful thing that martial artists get to experience you know, the humbleness of a fist fight because nine out of ten dudes do not have that experience and they do not understand what it takes to be in an actual fist fight you know and you especially with the the bare knuckle you know there's a difference between mma the boxing and the bare knuckle and a lot of people don't understand that hey you know the, the blunt impact you saw luke rockhold quit uh over the oh god as soon as he as soon as he felt that his tooth was chipped he's like Oh, dude, um, uh, man, this is gonna mess up my modeling career. Like, he, was- yeah, <laughs> prize fighter for sure. And Mike Perry, you know, and I noticed too with with their posture and hands too, how Luke had his hands open and Perry, you know, they're they're rocks. Yeah, you know, and I think street fighters understand that a little bit better. That you know, you don't open your hands because when you open your hands, you're you're opening up the swelling. Now you can't close them properly and leave them rocks closed. Don't open them in the street fight. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. I'll say one thing. Out of all the fighting that I've done, whether it's boxing, MMA, or bare knuckle, I definitely had the most satisfaction. Even in the fight that I, I, you know, lost the split decision, you know, that was one of the most funnest fights I've ever been in my life. And uh, those bare knuckle fights were really fun, man. I, I got to admit, you know, I really wish those guys would come around and just, you know, I'm not going to go down in money. You know what I mean? That's right. What- so, uh, so Brett, man, so let's get into this. You know, we, uh, we, we talked a little bit, you know, we watched you know, the Tartarian meltdown together pretty much. And, uh, yeah. you know, and you were, you were saying something about, um, you know, you wanted to touch on Elon Musk. So, uh, let's just go right into Elon, you know, they put him on the poster for a reason. And, uh, you know, I think he's part of this whole Illuminati, you know, you know, uh, Moloch worshiping trust fund dork, uh, you know, group, you know, what do you think about him? I, honestly, I believe he, he may be even on the council or the head of, you know, this guy's, you know, you're talking exploration of Mars and the SpaceX and the, and any magician will tell you the sleight of hand, you know, look what we're doing here, but not what we're doing here. And, you know, Elon seems to be doing a really good job at that. I mean, how many high-profile companies does he own? And we talk about in the, in the in the media. But how many times have you ever heard the boring company? I mean, where do they talk about that? Go to – even Google it. Look it up on YouTube. It's a tough sell. I mean, you got to really dig for it. They don't want you in that realm. And – the more this SpaceX, NASA, rockets, and, you know, and I used to be, a, you know, we, we grew up in Florida. I mean, I'm sure you had the opportunity to go to Cape, Cap, uh, Cape Canaveral, Kennedy, yeah, I do w- that whole deal. I wanted to be an astronaut. You know what I mean? That's what people As did I. That I was completely indoctrinated by this entire space. I mean, my dad and I, all we did was watch fucking Star Trek. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know. I'm still a huge Star Wars fan. <laughs> I know, me too. You know, but it's just like, I can't get over it. You know, it's it's just, it's an, it, the indoctrination is in everything. And they've, they've hit us from every angle. And, uh, you know, we bought it hook, line, and sinker. And I'm not afraid to admit that, hey, man, I was I was tricked my entire life. And now I'm awake and I see lies every day. And nothing really get past me and if it does i'll admit it right away i'm not one of those oh. like oh you know you know you know i'm just gonna double down on being wrong <coughs> you know no no absolutely and I, that's one of the things that uh you know one of the things i guess i would compare it to is being in a dark room and you're in a dark room for a long period of time your eyes will adjust to that right and you get accustomed to it, and you can start to navigate your way around, and you you know you you can feel your somebody flips on a light switch, and you're like, oh shit, this this is what we're doing, this is what we got going on in this corner, this is what's over here, yeah. and it's just that revelation of having that light switch flip on that you're just like, oh man, okay, and then you know like you say you, the signs once you turn that light on. It's just this pops out, this pops out, that pops out, this pops out. 
and then you start putting the puzzle together unintentionally. You know, I never, I never wanted to be a conspiracy theorist or crazy rapid hole guy. <laughs> you just start putting the puzzle together, and then when you got a puzzle sitting there complete, you're like, uh, guys, look at my puzzle. Yeah. And people are like, oh, that's not a real puzzle. And the pieces just start, when the pieces start fitting together too easily, that's when you know that it's like, oh, it's no longer you have to search for stuff. It's more like synchronicities are hitting you every day and downloads are hitting you every day. And you're like, oh, fuck, uh, boom, oh, you're walking by a logo and you're like, oh, more Saturn worship. I mean, I'm walking into the Secretary of State and I see a Space Force right next to it. <laughs> logo, you know what I mean? So you it, you yeah. can't you can't get away from it once you're once you're awake, man. And and the only time yeah. I've ever heard anyone talk about the Boring Company is when Joe Rogan did uh, when he, when he talks about Elon. He talked about the Boring Company. That's the only reason I even know anything about it. And and where. <laughs> How far have they gotten with that? I mean, we haven't heard a thing about it. You know what I mean? Lately, well, and, gave that initial like push, and then you're like, okay, you know. So I'm interested in what you think. What's going on with the boring company? <clears throat> so, in doing a little bit of research for doing this tonight, uh, let me see where I got it written down here. I wrote down a few notes. Okay, so they founded the boring company in 2016 as the new underground railroad. This was their moniker, their their flagship, as they're calling it. And it's essentially what they want to do for, like, the uh, the underground travel, uh, how Japan has the uh, – uh, I'm having a brain fart right now – the uh, the magnet train. I'm having a brain fart, it's but you know what I mean. The super fast, like, levitating magnet train. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and so they're, they're they're saying that this is what the boring company is all about is they're making travel underground, and so we can eliminate pedestrians and animals and you know obstructions from driving. But you look into it, and it's like a very shallow one-time sixty-minute interview, and then you're like, okay, well, where, where's the advancement on that beyond that? And you look into it, and it's like everybody that signed on to it to to begin with all dropped off and you're like okay so this is either bullshit or i don't have an alternative it's it's bullshit <laughs> you know i mean whenever whenever it's either bullshit it, you know it always could be you know what what this thing is and you're very familiar with you know and our our li you know listeners should be if they're paying attention now is the the revelation of method and you know and they'll give you a 60 minute I interview of something that they're doing and then that's all you're gonna get and you know, most most of the world's gonna miss it but in their stupid malachian you know uh karmic mind they think that the karma is off of them now because they told you you know so it's very very interesting you know um what are your theories you know that you think you know could be going on with the boring company. Let's say that he is drilling underground. Um, you know, we know that he's got a lot of distractions shooting up in the air towards space. You know, you think he's the, you think the real, uh, the real thing that he's got going on is this underground tunnel, or you think it's just sleight of hand distraction? Yeah. Again, I, I believe it's a sleight of hand. Uh, you know, Elon is, is put out there and you and I talked about this before with the, uh, the Halloween costume, you know, with the Balfamet, and it, he's a smart guy. There's no denying that. We can all admit he's an intelligent dude. So you don't wear something like that, not knowing the significance of what you're doing, not understanding. I mean, and he's a very strategic dude. I mean, you see him on Joe Rogan. When somebody asks him a real question, he doesn't just blurt it out. He sinks in, and he really answers your question. So a dude that analytical doesn't wear something like that with not understanding what he's representing, in my mind. Have you ever heard his, uh, have you ever heard the testimony from his babysitter 
Yes, I was actually going to ask you about this with them being the Antichrist. Yeah, yeah, and they come forward, and there she's just saying how you know there she's listening in on them pushing, you know the the whole family believed it, and you know that he's either the Antichrist or he's the one that's going to usher in the Antichrist, and then there's all this AI people, you know, you know, uh, asking AI all these, you know philosophical and biblical questions about you know revelations and and a lot of these ais have admitted and this is what to be in the demons that the antichrist is 32 years old he lives in la he's got two kids and he's a banker you know what i mean and like a lot of them have like said the same thing so that's really weird right you know and so and, if, and, you know, and anybody that touches in the Bible, and I believe there's a little bit of truth in the Bible. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say and defend the Bible to its its entirety. But when you put the entire book together, I, I believe there's a lot of truth in there somewhere. Yeah, and uh, the truth and just like everything, there's a lot of psyops, just like the English language. And, you know, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. It's our job to find the diamonds, no matter what we're reading, no matter who we're talking to, you know, um, there's diamonds in there for us. You know, there's some sort of connection to the puzzle that we're meant to find. And um, and yeah, the more I read the Bible, um, the, the, the more good stuff I find, you know, what I mean? yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, and and I love the book of Enoch and. There, there's a. I read like ten books at once all the time, which is kind of my problem. Is uh, I need to yeah. like read one book, and like, but it's just like I, I just I'm interested in so many different subjects and trying to put the puzzle together, you know, after, because I feel like we're we are kind of running out of time because yeah. ramping stuff up so much that you know the the more the more people who are awake, the better chance our kids will have of having uh, a normal life. Yeah. Or at least a shot at a normal life. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I, I equate it to something like uh, recruiting soldiers in a sense, you know, if we're not out here trying to get people to understand what's going on, we're at a default. We're, we're, we're behind the eight ball because they're not taking a break. They're recruiting soldiers. Whether the, the whether the soldiers understand they're being recruited or not, you know the vibration of the music, the shows, the I mean, the television. You know, as you said, we've talked about. You know, it's it's all bullshit, and our generation grew up on that. You know, we we idolized, you know, the false idols. Again, you go back to the Bible, and there's the bits of truth that you you know. Again, we talk about the puzzle. You put the pieces in, another piece here, another piece there, and it's not being conspiracy theory. It's not being paranoid. It's why does that puzzle piece fit in that spot? So easily. We didn't have to try. Yeah. It, it, it just came right in, right in front of your nose and slid right in there. And you're like, okay, that's weird. And it just manifests. Yes. You're, like, you're, you're to a point to where you're not looking for any of this. It's literally manifesting itself for you to cultivate. Absolutely. And it gets hard to not speak on it. You know, you are you get to a point of, man, you know, if I'm not going to say something and he's not going to say something. We're doomed. Are we just, we're, yeah, are we just as bad? We're fucking, we're worse. I think we're worse. Yeah. You no, know, and we don't speak up and like. I swear, like, it sounds crazy, but, like, at some point, you'll just have to fight everyone. You know what I mean? It's just, like, are we going to protect the ones we love, you know, or just let them walk into an oblivion? And it's, like, but, you know, once once you start finding all the 666s six, six, sixes and science and all these, no. you're like, oh, my God. Like, all right, you're telling me that I lived my whole life and I didn't know that there was 100 666s embedded in the science literature? Now, what's going on? Yeah. Does that mean the devil has infiltrated science? You tell someone that and they're like, what are you trying to say? The devil has infiltrated science? I'm like, no, I think the 
the trust fund dorks that created the system have embedded some hidden symbols to whatever they believe in. Yeah, they're they're playing 4D chess, and we're thinking in terms of checkers. You know, we're we have to also understand too. You know, we're we're human beings that have a lifespan of if we're lucky, a hundred years. You know, some of these entities that we're talking about, we don't understand their lifespans even. And, you know, you start getting into that territory and people start, well, you know what? Listen, if you don't understand the spiritual battle that's going on and what's been going on for thousands of years, I can't help you because it is absolutely a spiritual war. That's all that's left to colonize. Your spirit, your mind. And that's what the AI is going to roll out. Right. They want the mind shift. And people don't understand. It's like, look, if they already have all the money and all the power, then what is it really about? That's or why they keep ramp- now it's control. ramping it up. Why are they trying to turn, why are they trying to promote boys into girls so much and girls into boys? And why are they trying to, you know, destroy the family and make sure that everyone is single and, and, they're, and, and no one's taking care of each other? And everyone's done. Mm-hmm. Do we really think that Republicans and Democrats are really just locked in into a battle of ideology for hundreds of years? I mean, it's the biggest bunch of bullshit you ever heard in your life. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like Jesse Ventura's. It's pro wrestling at, at its best. I mean, <laughs> it, they're going to go out there. They're going to put on a great show. And then they're going to go in the back slap each other on the shoulder and great job. And and that's what we don't, you know, a, a lot of people don't want to admit to themselves. It's a hard truth to swallow that we've been bullshitted. Our, our parents were bullshitted. Our grandparents were bullshitted. This is a long game they're playing. And, you know, when you've had people that have sacrificed for the military and have died, you know, and bled for this country, it's a hard pill to swallow to know that you've been bullshitted and sold. So I I get the resistance on a certain level. You know, I I get that people don't want to admit to being tricked, but you know what? We're humans. And the only way we're going to get out of this is growing. And spiritually, we got to get over that hump. And we've been duped. And the sooner we figure that out and grow beyond that, the better off humanity is going to be. You know, our, our kids will have the future then. So let me ask you this. Um, you were speaking behind the scenes a little bit about the boring company, and I want to kind of flesh this idea out. So what's the sleight of hand? Is the sleight of hand SpaceX where he's shooting rockets at the firmament and they're bouncing off and they're going into the ocean and and he's really trying to use this tunnel to get past Antarctica into the other lands or... You know, what do you think? You know, what do you think is going on there? Or is the boring company just something fake and, you know, they just already know what's going on in the extra lands past Antarctica because, you know, they are privy to the, all the information and that's why they turn us the fuck around at the 60th parallel. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a reason you, you and I can't get a passport and uh, hitch a ride on down to Antarctica and take a peek. And, uh... Yeah, they they absolutely have an idea of what's in there. And I think they were met with resistance. Oh, and oh, now you're now we're talking. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you know, well, let's get into, you know, Project High Jump, Admiral Byrd. Uh, See, what is the uh, what book? What book did he write? Regardless, anyways. You know, he he went down there, he documented his entire experience. And if you really listen to him closely, he went through a portal. You know, and a lot of people say this is a Gartha. I, I you gotta understand the tree of life and what earth used to be and what humanity has been deceived. The Aurora Borealis is pretty much the the ghost of the tree of life. You know, you're seeing the vibration of what's left. And 
they have a, uh, what is it, the Ropus Negra, which translates into Black Rock. Sound familiar? Oh, yeah. So they understand the power of this. They understand, you know, everything's done purposefully. And what is, and explain to our listeners what Black Rock is for the people that don't know. They own it all. You, uh, you tune in to Fox News, C- CNNBC, NB- and you think you're getting a different perspective. No, they own all of it. You think you're eating different products. You think, oh, I'm going to boycott them. I'm going to cancel them. No, you're not. BlackRock owns it all, folks. <laughs> like, you need to understand. Go look it up. I, I'm just talking out of my ass. Go look it up. Prove me wrong. I'll wait. What about um? What about the French? What, uh, Vivo La France. They burned Black Rock to the ground. They've been rioting, you know, and pushing back against the elite. The electric workers supposedly turned off all, all <laughs> electricity to the uh, elite's mansions and gave free electricity to all the people who are suffering. They got mortar and bricks out in the middle of the freeway, and they're building a wall right across the freeway. And none of this is on our mainstream media. You have to search no. alternative groups and alternative media, and and uh, you know French, you know whatever is going on in some sort of different thread that has an alternative uh, point of view. But it's never on the mainstream. And I find that very, very telling and interesting. I try to get people to realize, like, look, there's a reason they're not letting you see that. Right, right. Yeah, well, it's 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 akin to uh, your Facebook page or your Instagram or your any, any level of social media. If somebody comes on your page saying, well, he stole this from me and he did that from me, uh, do you leave that up there or are you going to try and – Scurry that along, and well, let's talk about my vacation to Florida. I went to the Bahamas. You know, it, it's again. You go back to the sleight of hand. It's they're not interested in us being informed, and they're certainly not interested in us being together. And they're one and the same. You know, once we're informed, we will be together. Because we're understanding we're fighting for breadcrumbs when we need to go fight the bread maker. You know, and it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, here we are, Americans, always talking shit about the pussy French. And they're the ones leading the revolution. Literally. They literally are. And, um, you know, I hope, beautiful. I hope they really, I hope they really have find some success over there and can inspire uh, you know, a bunch of other people. And I'm not saying people be violent. I'm not saying. No, no, absolutely but not. But what I'm saying is that, you know, things are going to have to change before, you know, everyone, the, everyone loses everything that they always thought they were going to grow up with and always thought they were going to have. Like if people can't buy houses, if people can't buy land and everyone's always going to have to rent from these elite pieces of shit, you know, that are just trying to put stuff in your body to kill you. I mean, imagine putting something in your body promoted by people who are, who think the world's overpopulated. Like, it's just absolutely mind-blowing. And, that, and that's always been my point. It's like, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> you're buying the story from the people that don't want you here. You know, you go, you go to, you, you tune into CNN and watch, oh, I'm going to watch this, this, and this, and they talk about the vaccine and sponsored by Pfizer. And you're like, get the fuck out of here. Well, this message is no longer hard to decipher. Like, when we were growing up, it was almost like they tried to at least deceive us a touch. I feel insulted anymore. Like, they're just throwing it in your face. Like, here, you dumb fucks, you don't even get the difference. So here you go. Play with this. And most of them do, and they and they love it. They just call for it. My third episode got uh my third or fourth episode got kicked off because um, I was talking about some stuff going on with the 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 jab. You know what I mean? So 
we I think one thing that we got to be careful about while we're having conversations is uh you know anything about the jab and you know a few certain things especially if we're going to put on YouTube honestly I don't give yeah. a fuck because you know I'm just going to talk to tell the truth and you know they're going to push back or they're going to shadow ban they're going to do what whatever they want to do anyways and uh you know well, it's telling in itself. Yeah, regardless, you know, people have to hear, you know, uh, each other's point of view, you know. So, so, um, so let's break down the uh, Tartarian meltdown for a minute. You know, man, what an interesting, you know, point of view. I am definitely so far down the Tartarian rabbit hole that I've looked at now thousands of pictures. I read a couple books. I've I've seen so many different types of machines that you never knew existed. And um, you realize that just a couple hundred years ago, uh, something happened. And what the fuck was that? <laughs> what the f- Yeah. All those buildings to melt. And what caused this mud flood that buried so many buildings and... It makes you wonder, was it, was it a technology? Was it a, a direct energy weapon? Or was it some sort of free energy grid over, you know, over yeah. that caused everything to just boil and bubble? And you start thinking about how there's catacombs all over the world and they all have the bones up against the wall underneath the ground because they had to boil the bones and put their laid their their dead to rest up against the wall you know what i mean Mm -hmm. underground you know so it's it's interesting to think about how long was this melting going on and you know um you know who are the survivors and you know what exactly happened because there's a few pictures i looked at where where it looked like the castle was only hit in one single silo and so it makes it 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 seem like it was shot from the from up top you know what i mean so were we talking some sort of alien you know uh tech uh, agartha technology that (laughs) direct energy weapon that that came down like a raining shots of direct energy or was it all just and and did this happen twice or three times? You know, I and I honestly, I believe this is our third, maybe fourth go at civilization to the point of this level of technology, if you want to say it in, in those terms. Uh, you know, and I, I was somewhat skeptical starting to watch it. You know, I'm like, uh, mountains are mountains. I've You know, I've been to Utah. I've been to Colorado. I've taken the train to the Rockies. I've been through Tennessee. I've been through the Smokies, you know, so I've, I've spent some time in the mountains. And so, you know, at first I'm like, uh, but my mind is open, you know, see, anybody throws me information, I'm going to hear you out because anymore, I don't take anything to be what, you know, hey, this could be this, this, let me hear your information. Let me hear your point. I'll decipher from there. And as I got about, 20, 25 minutes into it, I started realizing this is, this is pretty concrete. This is no pun intended, <laughs> but, uh, I mean the, you the know, bridge where it was like up in the mountain. And yeah. It was just, we, we, we came up here, chiseled a bridge from here to there to fuck in the way he's like fucking nowhere. For, <laughs> like for what? Yeah. For what the, yeah, that, that, I had to laugh at that too. I, that had me cracking up and it's like, you know, but he's not lying. You're going to build a bridge to fuck all. I mean, no, you don't, unless there's a civilization of taller beings, which, you know, we can get into that. And it, it talks about, again, when you, you go back to the Bible, there's truths in your Bible. It talks about these giants going against God and going against what was supposed to be in the Anunnaki breeding and doing all that and the Nephilim and this ruckus. And then you get into the floods and what caused this flood? Did the earth flood itself because of the core temperature rising so high because of the grid? You know, these are questions that we have no frame of reference to even get into, you know, but to, and 
there, Reel it in here. Get a little off track. Was caused by God, and that was the original flood. Or and then there was several floods after that that were caused by man and their technology. Like, who knows? It could be, you know, so many different things going on there. But one thing's for sure: buildings are buried. There's lots of yeah. there's lots of evidence for buildings have been buried, and and. There's lots of evidence for people now are making these Tesla coils themselves and showing that there is etheric energy out there and is around you all the time. There's the one uh, young inventor from Zimbabwe who invented a cordless television that's Wi-Fi, that's a cordless refrigerator that keeps you know medicine cool you know it has it doesn't need to be plugged in at all and he's made all these free energy inventions and he's been poisoned three times you know and and what they did was they invited him over here to america to this inventors you know convention and they of course they poisoned them because no free energy they're never going to let free energy get out you know without a fight you know, but really, you can well, go and take a couple magnets and some copper wire and solder the the copper wire to a freaking light bulb, you know, uh, a housing and put the light bulb right in there and it'll turn on. It's not plugged into anything. It's right there. It's right. right there. It's not plugged into anything. You could do this for yourself. It's amazing. And well, look at any of our old cathedrals built back in the you know 1300s. If you believe you know, that narrative, <laughs> you know that's what I'm saying. You know, and then you you go a little further along, and and then look at the structures we're building, and it's like we went from that to that. It's almost like we've lost the technology to go to the moon type, you know, scenario. It's like, well, wait a minute. If we we had this, <laughs> you know, we could build this structure that is just withstand a centuries, thousands of centuries. I mean, it's, this has been here forever. And then we go to building buildings that last 30, 40 years. And then you go, you go well, we, we just lost the, the ability to do so. And it's like, well, you got a question. And then there. you realize that these Greek style, Roman style buildings are in Japan, the Philippines, China, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Taiwan, Cambodia, Vietnam, Africa, everywhere. All over South America. Realize that they never made it that far, man. They never made it that far according to the narrative. And then you read the right. entire one world civilization where all these buildings were were power plants and healing centers and and almost like they're alive, you know, and where where people would live to be maybe two and three hundred years old. Yep. Yep. And then that would make and then there you go. A, a lot of things would start making a lot more sense in the Bible, you know. And you know, uh, you know, we we've seen these uh, these giants in pictures and videos, and and it's undeniable. Now people could say, "Oh, that's fake. That's fake." Well, if you do a little research, you'll realize that the, the Smithsonian went out of their way to hide these giant bones. Their mm-hmm. way to make sure that people don't find out about this. And um, yeah, mm-hmm. man, it's just one thing after another. As soon as you find out Rockefeller's behind the education system and the medical, the medical system, and, you know, he's a freaking Malachian, you know, and it's, well, there you go. It, it's not hard to to do a little detective work. And is that a lightsaber by your head? Right. Is that a lightsaber by your head? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. See, I got a good Star Wars eye myself. Yes, sir. But uh, you know, yeah, you you can't go from that kind of structure to what we have now and beyond. And and again, you know, I'll go back to the moon thing. You know. We had the technology to go to the moon, but the official narrative from NASA 
is we've lost the technology. The official word. It's so funny too, because when when I showed that to my uh, my engineer friend Neil, that was that's what you could tell. That's that was the one thing that really got his brain like moving in the direction of questioning things, because his face goes, "Wait, what the fuck did he just say?" I go, "You heard it right, right. Neil. You heard it right." He's like, why would he say that? I go, I'm asking you. I'm asking you that. Why would he say that, Neil? Why would he say that? You thought you could go back to the moon this whole time. You thought we'd been going. Nah, nah. You know what I mean? So it's so funny. People it's, start to pick up. And all they need is that one piece of information. They keep questioning yeah. one part of the narrative. And their detective brain will start taking over. And guess what? Well, You'll be able to make better decisions moving forward for yourself and for your whole family and all your friends if you know the truth about how special you are, how special this place is, and, and that that we're in a spiritual war and that you have tasks that you have to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And that's why so many people feel, you know, have that unfulfilled feeling. You know, we're, we're warriors, we're conquerors, we're, you know... We are what we are, you know, the human being, the instincts are what you, you know, they're there for a reason. And have you ever seen any of the statues of uh, the Baphomet? Oh, yeah, I've seen from statues from Baphomet to Moloch to Baal to, you know, to Ishtar, you know, I mean. You ever know? You ever notice that they're all like transgender? They've got female chest, male arms, the beard, yeah. and you understand the narrative of what they're pushing now. Okay, they're blending that line, and you know again, it's the it's the puzzle. You start putting them pieces together. It's like, why does that? Why does that go there? And it just it, it it fits too well. It's and the one thing that's really hard for people to to swallow is that is that this whole like scientific narrative that I'm not saying science isn't real. I'm saying this whole narrative that they've created for people to get as far away from God and spirituality as is possible is so interesting because. What made me really get close to God and spirituality and, you know, is the fact that you catch these dudes not believing in their own creation, which is the scientific narrative. They they don't even believe. It. They're off at the weekend at Bohemian Grove doing, you know, rituals in the woods, <laughs> you know. Sacrifice yeah. to the owl. And, and you say the word Moloch and you say, well, that that's the same guy as Saturn. And you say, that's the same guy as Baal. That's the same guy as the Tot. That's the same guy as L. You know, that's the same guy as Kronos. And you realize, oh, these are all the same demon being told in a different part of the world from a different name. That's all. Right. And, and Ishtar, a.k.a. Venus, a.k.a. Aphrodite is the goddess that turns men into women and women into men. You know what I mean? And that's Moloch, a.k.a. Saturn's wife, fucking whatever you want to call it. So, so whether we want to believe it or not, these dorks at the very top believe it. And so they, they act according to their beliefs. They're not acting according to the beliefs that they set up for us, which is so interesting because once you do a little bit of research, you realize these guys do not believe in anything they are telling you. They believe. No, they've hijacked they believe religion. The opposite. They believe. In yeah, they've hijacked. Yeah, it. so it's 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 messed up that you know people just are so stuck in their train of thought and they refuse to open their mind to any real information that will that will literally serve them because in my opinion truth and peace you know just like it says you know in the book of Enoch in the book in the Bible truth and peace you know go together and the more wisdom and you're always the more wisdom you gain the more sorrow you will have because you know when you search without information 
can't you search us out suffering? You know what I mean? Heavy is the head that wears yeah, the crow. So, so, uh, what is this boring company, man? Are, are, is he looking for Mars outside the house of the ice? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think, you know, that's the Mars the sleight of hand. That's the Mars trick. You know, he understands that Mars is not a planet. It's not the orange planet. It's not the pictures of Nevada. They show you with the orange <laughs> tent or Australia. You know, I, I mean, give me a break with this. It, it's a really hard concept to wrap your mind around when you've been indoctrinated for so long. But you truly start to figure it out when you see, okay, they've hijacked the language. What's what's the name of this company? The Boring Company. This is boring. Pay hey, this no mind. It's we're doing we're doing nothing of significance here. This is boring. SpaceX, Space Force. Uh, that's pretty cool, huh? You know, it's yeah. There, Mars is okay. Let's check this out. So, you, you heard of uh, Warner von Braun? Yeah, he's the real creator he's of NASA. Space in the poster I made. Yeah. Okay. That's why I, I was pretty sure. Okay, so. Him and Disney are, you know, they're homeboys, and uh, that's a whole other ball and basket there. Yeah, they're, but they're hiding the woods together, one hundred percent. Yeah, and you know, you go back. Okay, let's see here. Let me go check my notes here. <laughs> yeah, he, essentially, he's just trying to get through the firmament, and he understands that we've tried up and no success. So he's he's going down, and he understands. There's a fella. I'm, I'm I wish I could draw his name up right now. Uh, had a submarine expedition down in the Gulf of Mexico, and he found the firmament under the Gulf of Mexico, and he was. They did a National Geographic thing about this. This dude turns up dead. Killed him in a helicopter, yeah, in he's a helicopter dead. Helicopter crash. Yeah. Yeah, isn't, isn't that funny? That's how weird, isn't it? People, how so, many helicopter crashes do we think are actually real, probably? Like, I mean, let's be like, man. most of those people probably found something interesting. I mean, the whole Malaysian, the whole Malaysian Flight 14 were all the people. There was yeah. the five patent owners. Four of them were on that flight. And then once those four guys disappeared, all of the patent went to this one uh company i mean it's nothing is ever what it seems man no no it's just that's the same trick they pulled with the titanic and getting the federal reserve yeah passed. that was book. anybody they that opposed that it. after that dumb book about the titan yeah uh, yeah. yeah method same same story from a book yeah. and then they're like okay well here let's kill three birds with one stone what we'll do is We'll do exactly what the book said, and then we'll kill these other bankers at the same time, hijack the Federal Reserve. So this is how you're saying these guys think in 4D chess, because they always have the method, oh, of revela uh, the revelation of method in there somewhere. They have, you know, mm -hmm. it's part. It's such a requirement that to me, this is why this would be their downfall, because this this requirement that they need to have once you see it it's so obvious that, i mean people are just going to start freaking out once they they know about this and they realize that's going on all the time yeah i, I believe their their rules are somewhat akin to the vampire rules yes if you, if you follow me you have to invite yeah, them in invite me in yeah and it's part of this ritual, you know, and, and people want to talk, you know, it's nuts. That's crazy. No, it's not a thing. It's like, you know, if you're not believing in this, you're at a disadvantage, my friend, because it, it is. It doesn't believe. They're doing it doesn't it. matter. We don't have to believe that they, that 77 means anything to them. Right? We don't have to believe it. But when they build it in 77, <laughs> they build it 77. <laughs> they make it get hit with flight 77 they put 70 windows yeah. in it and 
And then you realize that this number to them is some sort of power up in their magic, magical spell. They believe. Oh, they love numerology. Oh, yeah. Then it makes their spell that they're doing have more success. And you're like, that's the stupidest shit I ever heard. But they believe it because they were indoctrinated too. In my opinion, these kids all grew up psychopaths, indoctrinated into believe another stupid thing, right? Because they got all the money and they're all fucking bored. Here's my thought. They can all do a million rituals and do a bunch of sacrifices and and do all of their revelation of method a hundred times. And they're like, all right, we're ready to fight Brett and John now. We're going to box them, you know, and we're going to swamp their ass every time because all they can do is hijack our ideas and our creativity. They can't actually manifest anything for themselves. The only power they have is inherited. It's no yes, yeah. Well, but hell, look at look at Hollywood. They can't produce a damn original thought for anything. It's all a remake of a remake of a remake yeah. of a remake. And we find out that a magic yeah. wand is made from the holly tree. Yeah, yeah. Well, Hollywood's a whole other place. Need to do to trick your opponent. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's made out of holly wood. I mean, people need to wake the fuck up. I mean, pieces just yeah. go so easily because I'm forcing them, or is it so fucking yeah. obvious? You know what I mean? That something nefarious and spiritual is going on. Like to me, to me, it's never been more obvious. But obviously, I've been way deep into this information, so I, I see the where other people I'm trying to tell somebody something and in my mind, it makes perfect sense. And I can tell that they're all right. I gotta go, uh, uh, yeah, clean the bathroom. I'm like, you don't clean the bathrooms. He's like, yeah, I got, uh, you know, he's like, he's getting out of there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're quick to change the subject. And again, it's it's that uncomfortable truth that, you know, nobody wants to feel duped. These are black belt conversations. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, and, and, and yeah, it's very uncomfortable, you know, and people, you know, who, who wants to feel like they've been lied to or duped? Nobody. It's a terrible feeling. But it's growth. Because you understand once you've been lied to and you can you can get past that, you know, it's it's... It's one of those things to where you pick up on so many things and again, you know, you get sidetracked so easily and you know, you want to talk about everything. Like we talked about at the beginning, you want to talk about everything all at once because it hits you and it's just fresh in your mind and you want to stay, you know, you want to stay on subject and you want to stay with, you know, with where you're at. And it just, it's so much. It just, it's bombarded. It's, It's a calling. You know, there's, there's guys like you and I that, have a duty and apparently we can't escape it it calls and it calls because you know there's been times where i walk away from doing kind of stuff like this and i'm like no this is crazy you know i need to knock this off and it it just bombards me even more yeah. with you know the because symbolism and- you can't what well, this is what i try to get people to realize is like oh you just need to take a break and it's just like I can't, the truth hits you every single day. Someone will try to have a conversation about something fake with you. They'll be like, oh, Mm -hmm. did you see that Elon Musk shot a rocket up into space? And I'm like, no, he didn't. And they're like, what? And it's just like, well, don't expect me to have a fake conversation with you. Yeah, it's, you know, it's entertaining yeah, it's like entertaining that, you know, you, t- you talk to people, it's like, uh, did we land on the moon? Oh, absolutely. Have a good day. You know, and, and that's just that's just how you have to do it anymore because the, there's just the people that just don't want to hear it. My They're one friend so interesting that's been training with me for like 10 years, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, guy, Rob, he's like 50, and he builds tanks for the government. And, um, and nice. he's... 
he's totally against the jab got he got out of it with some sort of either religious or medical reason and knows it's com- it's complete evil and everything about it is bad but this dude still wants to believe we went to the moon because he saw it on tv as a kid you know what i mean and it's just like i'm like rob rob it blows my mind that you think that they're lying, completely lying now, but for some reason we're telling the truth then. It, that 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 just blows my mind. He's like, I'm not gonna let you steal my childhood from me. I'm like, your childhood more, man. Your childhood is more than a lie you believed on the black and white tell a vision, bro. Like it is. Well, not only. And not only that, Neil Armstrong has come out and told you, you've never seen that. It was a rendering. It was a, it was, they recreated it. He's come out and said it several times that you've never seen live footage of them on the moon. It doesn't yeah. exist. He's flat out said it. I know. And to further that point, you know, with the moon, look at uh, Neil Armstrong. Do a little bit of research on that fella. They were grooming him to be the president. He was going to be the president of the United States, the first man to walk on the moon. He was going to be, I mean, he was uh, either a senator or governor of uh, Ohio. I'm drawing, you know, I'd have to look in for it. But I do, he was in a Senate seat. He was in a position. And after he went to the moon, he went ghost. Now, does that sound like a dude that achieved the greatest thing humanity's ever done? Or does that sound like a dude that's pretty ashamed of what he was put up to? Dude, if you watch the video of those guys when they get back giving their speech, Mike, Mike, Mike Collins look, and Neil Armstrong are just looking down like this, like totally ashamed. And they get Buzz Aldrin to be like the mouthpiece. And even then, he doesn't look very convinced. And uh, yeah, man, I, I, I pride myself in being able to read people and know when they're lying and know when they're hurt. And knowing they're acting like they're not hurt, but they really are hurt. And, you know, and I, I'm good at reading body language and knowing if someone's fighting or, uh, or lying. And those dudes were completely full of shit. Now, let me ask you this. And kind of jumping around because I want to talk about how you know someone's lying. Have you ever seen the interview with the the woman, Kate Griggs, who's husband was George Griggs. He was in charge of wet ops in Lebanon during the 1990s. Not by name. I may, I've watched so many videos. It's, or, it's, it's really like a hard. Nine to... hour, it's like a seven hour interview of this blonde haired lady, probably in her like late forties, fifties. And she's telling you about how her, her husband was, an assassin for the in Lebanon and he was acting like he was a liaison for the Lebanese king what they were really doing is running wet ops for the CIA they were going around killing innocent people and making it seem like it was whoever the Lebanese were fighting and then they kept selling guns to the Lebanese and the and it was just creating chaos and then he'd come home and get drunk and he'd start telling his wife all this information well, she's a hardcore Christian, so she's trying to save him every night, and he's just going down the rabbit hole, down the rabbit hole. Well, eventually, he ends up missing, you know, and, and they can't, they start fucking with her big time, and so she kind of gets into, you know, this, this uh, security detail going on, and she does this interview with her pastor, and for seven hours, she tells the craziest stories, and you wouldn't believe, I mean... You know she's telling the truth. She didn't look at her notes one time. Right. No, and yeah, you can tell when somebody's recalling from memory and when they're telling you matter of fact and when somebody's trying to bullshit you and, you know, there's the mannerisms. But I, I, I don't have a lot of information. I'd actually appreciate if you'd send me some on that. Uh, I do know a little bit because of John Perkins. He's got a book. It's called an Economic Confessions of an Economic Hitman. And he dealt with those people a little bit. And uh, he was, uh, I believe, Nicaragua and Panama were his main 
deployments. And, uh, yeah, he really good guy. John Perkins, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Awesome books. He's got, I think, two or three of them. And he, he was yeah, an assassin? I, I, yes. Yeah, he was, uh, he was what they call, uh, Oh, what what does he classify it? Basically, he's the economic hit man. So he'll he'll go in first and basically lay the financial strategy on the table for you. Of listen, you're not paying your bills. This 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 and this is going to happen. And they either go okay, we're gonna we're gonna play ball, and he goes away. Or the next step is military, and he talks about that in his books. It's really interesting, really good stuff, and uh. He basically got out of it, you know. He he uh he was in Panama, and I believe they were trying to overthrow. Uh, I'm going to do a disservice to this, so I'm just not even going to bring up the name. But it, the the Panamanian government at the time, and he basically seen it. He it was bullshit, and so he got out, and thus the books, you know, the Confessions of the Economic Hitman. Really interesting stuff, though. I would strongly recommend that to anyone. Yeah, it's all. Uh... The, the world is so much more interesting than they want us to know, man. And that's, that's oh, what absolutely. You know, I try to get people to realize. Um, so let me ask you this. Is Admiral Byrd, you know, he goes over an Operation High Jump. You know, there's the rumors that they fight the aliens. They bring back, you know, Werner Von Braun from, you know, over from. World War Two, and they get NASA right around the time of Roswell, and they start making all these Disney movies and cartoons that are showing you the moon, and it's all this push for this, you know, this alien agenda, you know, and now for the longest time, you know, um, you know, they were telling you aliens aren't real. That's a big conspiracy. They were even killing people that were talking about aliens too much. And now they pretty much all come out and said, not only are aliens real, but there's a, there's a mothership here. just outside the earth. And, uh, you know, we, we need to watch out for those. And, and we've shot down, yeah. we've shot down <laughs> UFOs. So you're telling me that supposedly, according to their narrative, these things can travel at light speed, can get here from other galaxies, and they have technology and anti-gravity machines that can do things that we can't even comprehend. And they were shot down. They were shot down, down by right? Maverick, like Tom Cruise, you know, like, like fucking right, break, right. Man. like. No man, they had space. They had space force up and going. Luke Skywalker was up there. They had the X wings flying. And people are like America. <laughs> like they're just. Uh, yeah, come on. Yeah, come on with that. Like you try to tell people that that Chinese spy it, satellite was just a NASA satellite coming down, and they're like, "Please claim this." And they're like, "Oh yeah, no problem. We'll say it was a spy ba spy balloon." He's like, "Brilliant. We'll shoot it down. Everyone will be like America." <laughs> it's like. Unbelievable, dude. Yeah. People fall for it. Hook line. Oh man, it's it, it, it's it's laughable. I mean, it it really is. You have to sit there and just take it in and go, fucking seriously. This is what we're doing. Okay, you know it's it's it, it's scary. It's just scary because. You know, the amount of evil being poured into the world, it makes you a believer. It makes you understand that there's something going on. It bombards you. And For me, ritual, it was all know, the rituals and the symbolism, and, and, and it's from the top down. It's like, okay, I used to believe that, you know, serial killers could be evil and you could have isolated people and... You could have crazy people, but then you realize all the main serial killers that are all famous all had some special military training, and are they being sent out to cause fear? Are they being sent out on purpose because demonic forces at the top are trying to have an agenda towards getting people to always be stressed, always be in fear, like... 
you know, it's really interesting once you find out that a lot of these famous serial killers all have some sort of special military training. And it's like, what are these all MK Ultra, you know, assassin dorks? You know, so you, every, nothing. You know, and it's, 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 it's funny that you. Yeah, and it's funny that you just said famous serial killers. Why do we glorify this shit? You know, why are these people famous? Why is this a thing? Why are we so fascinated with mass murder? Yeah, I, it's, it's it's all part of their plan to desensitize everyone. And, you know, in my opinion, you know, they're going to get everyone just like that uh, rock video that I posted, you know, getting people. Yeah. You know, you think the rock wanted to make some sort of of, of child molesting robot joke? I don't think so. I think that these guys came up to him and they're like, hey, man, we're going to embarrass you a little bit. You're going to have to make a child molesting robot joke on here. And he's like, oh, fuck, man. Are you serious? Like, yep. You know, it's going to really hurt my brand. You know, he's yeah, like, yeah. all right, I'll try to make it funny. They're like, oh, we don't care. Just do what we say. You know what I mean? That's the truth, man. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. A lot. Yeah, absolutely. Come on, set well, that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the celebrity thing is just, I mean, that's a whole other rabbit hole there. I mean, these people are not put there because they're ultra talented. You know, there are several human beings that are ultra talented that have zero spotlight on them. It's whether you play ball or not and at that level and there's initiations and there's, you know, there there's levels to that. And the way, yeah, it, it's just, it's frustrating because it's, it's just hard to continue to talk about when people constantly stifle it and you're like, man, this is the thing. You know, these celebrities are not celebrities because they're talented. They're in on it. You know, why, why do we stress, you know, and, and, and the argument that most people come back with too is, well, the reason that celebrities and actors and all these people get paid so well is because the money they're generating and they're bringing in. And on the surface, it makes sense, right? You, you, you eat what you kill. Sure, I understand that logic. But why do we give a fuck what entertainers make? Why do we care if we're entertained with them? Wouldn't we invest better in teachers, doctors, people that are influential to our children? You know, that's who we should care who's satisfied in their jobs and their positions, not actors and basketball players that are scripted from fucking day one. You don't get handed a playbook. You get handed your script. It's all part of the game. It's a distraction. How many people grew up watching sports, loving sports? Dedicated my entire life to the shit. Loved it. I still love sports to a certain degree. But I also can see behind the veil now. And it's all a distraction. It's all to keep you from understanding the plan and the agenda. Or or to realize that that God loves you, that you're very special, that this place is special and it's not twirling through the universe about to get hit by a fucking asteroid. You know, one of my favorite... One of my favorite realizations, and this came from a scientist, was they tell us that the Earth is being bombarded by meteorites all day, every day. And the only reason that we're yeah. not annihilated is because we're protected by our atmosphere. Okay? But these dorks on the moon didn't have to find a cave for 25 hours. The first thing find a cave in a place that has nothing but craters right next to us being bombarded by meteorites but these guys don't have to find a cave at all they're not worried about anything there's no atmosphere blah 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 like all you got to do is use common sense think about things for a second and it's not hard to debunk almost anything these guys put out anything anything right no matter right. what it is. I think almost all right. of these world wars 
were just about destroying more Tartarian buildings. Like, sure, there may have been some other things going on, but I think it was mainly to destroy all these ancient cathedrals and buildings that all looked alike that were everywhere. When you see the Greek building in Vietnam and they just got horse and carriage and they're just rolling around and there's just this huge Greek, it looks like the Vatican in Vietnam and you realize that that was destroyed purposely. I'm telling you, Mm -hmm. like, you start going down that Tartarian rabbit hole and you start putting the meltdown together and the technology and and, and, and the hidden thousand years that's on so many buildings, you know, it, really the timeline is probably 1023 and not 2023. And that whole dark, that whole dark <laughs> ages where they lost history for about 700 years really is just that it's bullshit, you know. Starts yeah. to make more sense, yeah. I mean, as All far the Civil as what War happened, pictures look like it's just dudes in like, like really ultra clean mustaches. Everyone's clean, standing around. It looks like a total photo op. So you're like, okay, are these guys really a battle, or did somebody organize a photo op to like go in and 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 create a new narrative? And who is the the father of propaganda? Well, you you mentioned him, Walt Disney and Werner von Braun. Well, what was the World Fairs all about? Hiding Tartarian narrative, hiding Tartarian technology. Whose father worked for the World Fairs? Walt Disney. And you're like, holy shit, bro. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. There's not one connection that we haven't made that completely makes the whole fucking lie make more sense. And that's just it. It's, you know, go back to the puzzle. The pieces just slide We're themselves not together. Them, man. We're not when you've been looking into no. the freaking to Walt Disney for a year, and then you've been working in looking into the World Fairs for a year in Tartaria, and then you realize that the connection is Walt Disney's dad was a carpenter at the World Fairs. Okay, now now I'm just uh, I'm losing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's and then you know, but think of all the stuff that Walt Disney and Warner Von Braun ushered in too. You know, I mean, where we're at now with the AI and the next step is the you know the AI human yeah. hybrid, and Elon Musk is heavily into that. He's got a company for that, uh, Neuralink. That's when. You, and uh, what do you think he bought? In my opinion, for? that's when you lose. You're gonna lose your soul, like you know the. Here's my theory. I guess you could say I'm a Christian because I believe in, you know, Yeshua and that he gave his life for our sins and in Jesus and and that he that he is, you know, was trying to tell the message of God. And I believe they did give his life for, for our sins. You know, I, I believe that story and I believe that story is told from other civilizations and they just give that story a different name. You know, like all angels are the right. Anunnaki. In Sumer, they're the Anunnaki. Mm-hmm. Well, in the Bible, it's the fallen angels. You know, in Babylon, it's the fallen angels. You know, so it's all these different things going on all at once, but they're telling the same story. You know, they're telling the same story. Yep. And, and that's very telling in itself, too. You know, almost all the religions are are very similar at the core. But then you got to break down that word itself, you know, religion, religion. And what we're, what we're practicing as religion now is not correct. We're, have you ever, okay, check this out. We talked about the Baphomet statue earlier. Uh, most of your pictures of Jesus. White man, long hair, beard, standing like this. The Baphomet pose. You think that's done by accident? You don't think anybody thought of that on their murals? They're they're selling us an upside-down religion. They have us praying the wrong way. They have us worshiping 
not all of us, you know, obviously there's people that understand the difference, but, you know, the majority that are going and holding their Bible tight and going to church on Sunday aren't realizing they're, they're, they're praying the wrong way. They're, they're giving themselves to the wrong, the wrong God. And to understand that there's multiple gods of this realm and other realms. And again, we've been lied to. It's his story. You know, it's not our story. We've, we've been bullshitted top to bottom. And well, my, here's the way I look at it. I look at it that there's, there's one creator and that he's God. And, and that there's these demons and other entities that are in these other realms that are part of whatever you want to call this simulation, this realm that we're in. And you have these trust fund dorks that have made deals with these entities that kind of run this realm, right? This, this ball, this Ishtar, this Baphomet, this Moloch. And while our, we are made in God's likeness. And so what people don't realize is that, you know, uh, they're telling you you're going to come back in every religion. They're, they're, they're telling you no matter what, you're coming back. You're coming back. You're either going to come back here and you're going to live through this hell again in a different life. You know, uh, they even say that in the, you know, we're made in his likeness. Okay. Until, until what? Until he resurrects. And then he's the only one that could do it, right? No, man. No, we're all going to resurrect. We're all going to come back, you know? And, and I believe that that's what the monks are doing. The monks, all they do is train martial arts, meditate, eat, and, you know, stay in their little area. That's the only way you can get through this life with no regrets. You follow all of the 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 after deaths where people have died and come back to life it's all the same story i i've listened to like hundreds of these stories it's all the same story you go and you look at yourself and you judge your life and you feel how you treated every person throughout your life you go up you go through your whole life and you every single person that you made feel like shit you feel what they felt like in that moment you feel what they felt like. And so here's my theory is that you have to keep coming back until you get it right. And this is hell. This is hell. And what they've done is try to, back in the day, they used the Bible and all these religious books to control people in a certain way. They got you scared of life and they made you do certain things and be like, oh, you're going to do it like this. Only I can read the Bible. You're going to do what I say. Otherwise, you're going to burn for an eternity. And knowing that all they all know they're coming back. That's why they act a certain way. That's why they have a certain agenda to keep making sure that their family stays intact, stays in power. Everything that they do is to make sure that their legacy stays. Because they all believe that they're coming back unless they have some bad karma which is why they have to do the revelation method. That's what uplifts their karma, you know? So once you start realizing these dorks, you know, are really into some dark and like even dorky rituals, like a lot of this shit is like some like drama, some like drama club dork shit. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I've, I've, have you ever watched any of that? Like the yeah, uh, like the Bohemian like, Grove. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it, this it, is some drunk club dork, silly. Like in their their chanting and all of their stuff and and the stuff that they were saying into the microphone just sounded so creepy. And it's just like, man, like are these guys looking around at each other and being like, yeah, this is sweet. Right, like as as a grown man, do you look around and take that serious? Like, but can if you, you really <laughs> indoctrinated into thinking like, okay, I'm going to fifth hour Moloch Ball and Ishtar study, you know what I mean? Then then that would be like your shtick, right? Just like how yeah. other people go to 
church and they pray in their own way. And in my opinion, you don't need a pastor, you don't need a preacher, you don't need a scientist to tell you anything. All you need is to pray to God for yourself and, and talk to him like you'd be talking to your father on the other side of the room. You know what I mean? Like, man, have a conversation and watch information come to you, you know? You know, it, it truly is amazing. And, um, you know, we're definitely going to have to do this again, man. You and I are all over the place. We could talk conspiracy for hours, I can tell. Um, I got to get up at five in the morning. So uh, what we're going to do yeah. is um, we're going to get back to this and we'll have a, a Florida Keys. We'll have a marathon mania every once in a while. We'll come back and we'll we'll um, revisit a lot of whatever topics. I mean, I know you wanted to get into Agartha, but we never really touched on it. You know? Yeah. No, yeah. It, yeah, you know, like we like we said, too, you know, you, you, this stuff comes at you, and it just it's, well, I watched this, I've watched this, and you, you, you want to bounce it off, and guys like us don't have many people to bounce this kind of stuff off to because most people don't want to hear it. And so it's refreshing to have somebody to go back and forth with. So yeah, we, we end yeah. up going everywhere with it. And yeah, maybe next yeah, time we'll, we'll have really to reel it in a little bit. More. That's why I, I knew that's why this one was going to happen this time. That's why I just said, I put the title as the best of Key West. You know what I mean? I knew that we would be all over the place and kind of an introduction. We've known each other for a couple of years, but never actually got to talk, you know, face to face. It was a pleasure, man. I had a good time, and I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And you know what? We're going to keep bringing you the truth, man. You know, you know, one way, shape, or form or the other. You know, you can, you can watch us fight. You can watch us do martial arts. Or you could just watch us. You can listen to us here, you know, talk about, you know, the truth about what's going on in this realm. So God bless everyone. Stay the course. Stay efficient. And, uh, you know, wake up.